Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War Snowed Under event in which the Snow Panther is added to the game. Before I get into that though, uh, there are two major things that are going to be happening this week that are kind of interesting. The first one is the Nintendo Switch version for Gems of War should be released within the next day. With that being said, I am going to be covering a early game video basically for the first day, first week, first month, and just other general tips sometime uh, later today. It'll be geared mostly towards the Nintendo Switch version, however it is of course applicable for any version of the game, as all of them are pretty much essentially the same, but it will be focused a little bit more on Nintendo Switch as well. Nintendo Switch is starting up in, uh, in the next day or so. Uh, so we'll be streaming uh, quite a bit of content on that. We'll be starting from a brand new account, of course. It's going to be a completely uh, Nintendo Switch version. Will be its complete own version, at least initially. That is not cross-platform with any of the other versions. So uh, we're going to be able to start from a brand new, fresh start, which I have done many times before in the past. However, this will be the first time I've ever done it where everyone else around us has also been reset. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that ends up uh, panning out as of course we already know pretty much all the optimal ways of getting up and i'll be sharing uh, that information for any of you that may not uh, be aware of what it is other than that there's one other pretty noteworthy thing uh, that's going to be happening this week uh, we are getting a hero class this friday and while most hero classes are kind of average this one is relatively noteworthy for two main reasons this hero class is pretty much as good as titan it uh, has many of the same benefits that titan has such as his barrier every brown as well as having half mana start and overall is going to probably be top three as far as hero classes are concerned i don't believe it's going to be better than titan but it is pretty high up there as far as how viable it is as it's basically just an alternative version of titan in a way so uh, it's going to be really really good in that regard it also has a really interesting weapon on it the other factor to mention is uh that's hero class as many of you may know from Darkstone, uh, it's been stuck at level 8 for quite some time now, and it's been missing a hero class. But the hero class coming this Friday is for Darkstone. So that will now allow us to go and uh, finally get this thing upgraded to 10 plus stars. Uh, this is particularly relevant on this kingdom, as it is going to be the first 10 star magic kingdom in the game. Meaning the first plus 3 magic kingdom. Meaning essentially plus 1 magic for everything. Which is of course really good, because magic is the best stat that you can get from any kingdom, as well as just in general. But anyways... Those are the two major things happening this week. Let's go grab our tribute real quick and get into the normal stuff. So, as far as the event, uh, we have ourselves the Snow Panther coming into the game. Uh, it comes in with Arcane Light Trade Stones early on in the game, particularly if you're starting on Nintendo Switch. You're going to want to go and put this immediately into Elowin. Elowin you can get for free from completing out the Pan's Veil Kingdom. Uh, you'd want to accumulate several of these and try getting them traded. His second trait is a light storm it is particularly relevant on him as he actually just got a major buff about a week or two ago in which he does seven damage per yellow that he plays an additional seven damage if you end up having a light storm off of his trait a light storm makes it so more yellows fall into the board those sons will be able to get a lot of damage and basically the whole thing with early game is the more boost ratios you can have uh the better uh almost every single boost ratio other than ones based on stats are really good in uh early game simply because they are scaled more towards mid game. So having them as soon as you're starting, particularly some of the better ones are going to be a lot more potent when you're first uh, starting out. Other than that, you'd also probably want to put it on Mana Core. Mana Core is a decent troop in that it has a quick mana drain, a quick stun, and it's also one of the cheaper and pervious troops in the game, which has a lot of immunity on it. Other than that, uh, later in the game, you'd want to put it on Luna for one explosion on yellows, a Queen Grapple Pot for usefulness within uh, Goblin teams, and uh just general mythics from there to go get all your mythics max as far as this troop itself unfortunately it's pretty useless it freezes an enemy and then creates six blue boosted uh by every single frozen enemy out of three times so every additional blue it'll be additional three so if there's two uh blues it'll go up to six if there's three it'll go up to i mean it'll go up to 12. uh if there are three it'll go up to 15 so on and so forth uh as far as this troop it's pretty much just going to be useless the furthest you can really get with it is synergizing it with something like spirit dancer and throw spirit dancer green into that and then it feeds blue back into spirit dancer but you're still going to need a freeze option like queen mab or borealis or anything that can do freeze decently and you're basically using three slots just to try to make one other fourth slot work like a justice or whatever else you might end up putting there so this troop is pretty much not going to be used for anything unfortunately uh, there's much better double troop combos out there that don't require a third and it's it's basically never going to be used as far as its traits it's not really helping much either it has stealthy and it has fast 
Uh, while this is helpful in a mana generator, uh, he's just not really going to be mana generating much. He might be useful in some kind of freeze option in the future, but as it currently stands, I don't feel like he is viable for anything other than gaining some gold this week. Uh, as he does gain additional gold. With that being said, other event stuff this week. We have 10% to all Fey as well as 10% to all Elementals. As I just mentioned, uh, this does get 400 additional gold in PvP and Explore. Uh, this you could end up doing in any kind of Explore team, like with Sunbird, if you just want to do a quick rush with Firebomb and everything. However, the more useful thing is if you're going to be starting on Nintendo Switch, there is uh, this team that you can end up doing with it, which is relatively cheap and obtainable on day one. Uh, we have ourselves Mountain Crusher, Elowin, Rowan, and uh, Snow Panther. Mountain Crusher, you get if you, um, when you're leveling up your hero, you should be putting your masteries into brown and red. Uh, brown and red in order to try to get Mang. Uh, do every single one that has a brown into brown because you want to get Mountain Crusher as quick as possible. It's an insanely good mana generating option that can be used with essentially every single team uh, in the entire game. And uh, you'd want to do this with Titan Hero Class. Titan Hero Class you get from completing out the Stormheim uh, quest line all the way in the top right. Uh, Elwyn, uh, you end up getting for free from completing out the Pan's Veil vale Kingdom. You can also end up trading him this week. Uh, oh, you only need a second trade. Don't bother getting his third. But uh, you can get that uh, from it doing uh, Pan's Veil, vale, which is in the top middle of the map. And uh, Romain is just a somewhat decent boost ratio. It is boosted based on armor, which is going to be pretty low in early game. However, it's such a big boost ratio, and she has 20% this week. That overall, it would be worth doing on uh, the first day or the first few weeks or the first few days and basically throughout this entire week due to the 20% bonus. But uh, this will you can end up getting from Forest of Thorns uh, for free from completing out that quest line. And Snow Panther, of course, is a group we went over, only costs 300 glory. Uh, you can easily get that from Guild Tasks. And if you haven't gotten it from the Guild Tasks, you can get it from simply opening some maps as well as just doing PvP for a short duration and you be able to afford him and get 400 additional gold per every battle. Uh, that you end up doing within pvp or explorer uh, other than that as far as our other event objective we have to go kill a bunch of browns and explore uh, the absolute best kingdom to go to that or any of the heavier blue king uh heavier brown kingdoms uh like hazel uh zayjin also a pretty decent option as well as again any of them that have a lot of brown or really anywhere where you need to go farm trade zones but uh from what i can tell hazel seems to be one of the highest as it is a pure brown anyways and this has a high concentration of uh brown troops in it to begin with so event keys event keys are glacial peaks this week so if we go over to our glacial peaks here uh there's only really two drops that are somewhat worth it uh queen mav which is one of the better freeze freezing options in the game because it can zero turn freeze the entire enemy team since it gains freeze every single time it extra turns however it's not really that good these days for a couple reasons the main one being that bless is starting to become a lot more prevalent and even more so next patch when it ends up getting immune to transform and uh, things that have impervious, as well as if they have Bless on them, have both immune to Mana Burn and immune to her Freeze, basically making her uh, completely useless, which is really unfortunate. She used to be quite a bit better in the past, but uh, she's still used occasionally for a Freeze option. However, more often than not, uh, she's not really that useful these days. But uh, as far as usefulness from this kingdom, that is one of the more core troops. And other than that, there's Skady, which has the same struggle that Queen Mab has, not just with her ability, but the fact that she also summons Queen Mab so she kind of has the same mechanic twice. Uh, other than that, uh, she is occasionally used for blue Guild War Day, particularly with Azura. You could also possibly get away with her in blue uh, Tower of Doom. However, for the most part, you would only occasionally use it in blue Guild Wars and isn't really that needed. So in summary, not really worth opening event keys this week. I would not really bother. It's a great week just simply to skip uh, event keys unless you like desperately wanted a Queen Mab or something. But other than that, I would say a uh, great week to just keep using event keys and wait till a future week. Uh, so, Tower of Doom. We have ourselves yellow Tower of Doom. Uh, we only had two covers left that we haven't had. And yellow was, of course, uh, one of those two. Uh, as far as this event, just to recap real quick as far as what Tower of Doom is. Uh, Tower of Doom is an event that occurs once every month that is guild-wide. Out of every single event, it's basically the one that actually requires you communicating with your guild. Uh, you're going to be able to find various scrolls within all of these rooms. You want to have people in your guild scouting out to see what these scrolls are and telling your guild uh, members uh, what each of the rooms are and then going to the more important ones. The more important ones are lucky scrolls, which give you two doom kills, which essentially are the points within this game mode. A uh, power, which ends up giving plus one to all of these stats right here. It doesn't increase the stat itself by one, but it increases its lower number by one. So uh, if we were to get another power, it would be uh, we'd gain another HP, we'd gain another armor. That would go to two out of six, and that would go to one out of four. 
Uh, it doesn't actually increase that number, simply a lower number. And then once you get enough of those, uh, it'll go up for the full stat to everyone in your guild. Uh, the heroism allows you to uh, kill out the final battle within a single click. Uh, you would mainly use this for the later uh, rooms when you go up against either the spirit fox room or the astral spirit. The uh, main reason you would normally use it on these two is just because they have instant kill uh, once you reach a certain point. And uh, since they both have empowered, they would be able to get that damage out immediately. And since it's true damage, it pa bypasses your armor. You'll normally die to them. So those are the ones you tend to want to use heroism on. Uh, haste you would end up doing uh, occasionally. It doesn't really yield you much as it just gives you one sigil. However, that one sigil will uh, basically replenish itself. So if you end up getting a Val Raven, you'll end up net gaining. Uh, however, you'll just break even. But it's still worth doing simply because you do have that chance to get a Val, Ra uh, Val Raven out of it. Uh, one that I don't normally mention that I probably should, and someone brought this to my attention, uh, Fireball. Fireball is kind of like haste, but slightly better. Fireball can be used on any of these rooms. You use one sigil up front. However, you can then use this scroll at a later floor. So let's say we go and get it here, and then we go all the way to, let's say, floor 20, and the battles are starting to take forever. And we have a tier 5 battle that we don't like, or maybe like a tier 4 with three immune to devour while we're trying to use something that has devour or something. Uh, you can simply go use that fireball, get that done, and waste uh, zero sigils for it. So it's basically like a delayed haste scroll, essentially, a, fire, a fireball. And other than that, every single floor has an unlock. The unlock is generally the way that you go and, uh, well, unlock the final room. Uh, you defeat the unlock room, and then you are able to do the final room, and then you're able to move on the main floor. And it's the one that you would report back to for every single floor. Um, but basically, you just need to find out some kind of system you want to have for your guild, and basically to set it up in order to communicate it. As you can see here, this means floor 1, room 5, then floor 2, room 4. And uh, you can just use terminology and other stuff to communicate with your guild which rooms to do. Uh, out of every single guild-related event, it is the one that requires the absolute highest amount of uh, communication with your guild. So do make sure to communicate them, either through Discord or through the uh, chat system within the game. And do keep in mind, every single guild is different, so you can't just copy someone else's guilds. Uh, otherwise, they'll be completely different, so don't do that. Uh, but yeah, that's the rundown of uh, Tower of Doom. Uh, while we're already at it, though, let's go over some teams for Tower of Doom. Of course, this is a yellow restricted week. So uh, there are two main teams I just wanted to go over uh, briefly. Uh, the first one uses Yasmin's Pride. I know some people don't have Yasmin's Pride, but go over the other one next. But basically, uh, Yasmin's Pride into Titan. Uh, use it with Barrier, of course, and the one explosion. Uh, Bull Taurus ends up getting boost ratio off of HP. This ends up tearing or their armor and giving you a bunch of HP. Works very similarly to many of the HP gaining uh, methods in the past where you essentially just gain a bunch of HP so you never die, and you get boost ratio on something that has a HP boost ratio, deal a lot of damage off of them, and then simply win. Queen Aurora we simply have for gaining even more HP, uh, mainly for her barrier and the fact that she's plus one to all mana, simply to hold down our mana accumulation. Uh, as far as the cheaper one, the one that uses no mythics, uh, we're going to be going with Mang, Divine Bala, Quillen, and Luna of which her trait stones are available this week if you don't already have her traded. Of course, again, we'll just be using Titan for this as we almost everything in this game, the current state of the game. Uh, Mang simply to uh, tear away their armor uh, and then gain a bunch of attack based on all their armor so you have a high attack value. The finish ball into Quillen can loop a little bit and both have skull spam. They both feed uh, mana uh, through each other as well as have synergy. And that's the color that one creates, the other one ends up utilizing for their ability. So you'll be able to get quite a bit of skull spam down. And with Luna, it gets one uh, explosion every single yellow. So we'll be able to get quite a bit more mana. And it does stack with um, Titans one explosion onto a yellow every extra turn. So you can end up getting two explosions essentially for every yellow extra turn you do. And one simply for every single uh, yellow that you'll end up taking. Which will happen a lot because Divine Ishbala creates uh, yellow off of her convert from green to yellow. And Luna, you wouldn't really cast. However, if you did, you could randomly possibly get some positive status effects for yourself or some negative for the enemy. Her damage itself isn't really going to be that useful. However, those effects that she applies could potentially be useful. But for the most part, you're just using her for her final trait. Uh, you could also use Queen Aurora there uh, if you happen to have it, but I wanted to keep this with no mythic, so it'd be a little bit cheaper and uh, easier to uh, end up uh, building. Anyways, on to the next thing. As far as all the event-related stuff this week, on Tuesday, we have ourselves all seeing eye. Uh, Wednesday, we have the pet for, um, it was that pony one, the one for centaurs. Uh, on Thursday, we actually have no event. Uh, 
Yeah, that's because we have a hero class coming out on Friday. And of course, from Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday for the weekend long event, we're going to be having the new hero class, which is going to be a extremely viable one. I advise to get it leveled some. You probably even need to as well if you want to get Darkstone upgraded on higher star levels. I think you'll need it to like level 20, 40 or so. Of course, that doesn't take long, but uh, it still needs upgraded some. And it's a pretty good hero class overall. As I mentioned, it's basically an alternative Titan. Uh, I don't believe it's going to be as good as Titan, but it's pretty high up there. Probably top three as far as hero classes are concerned. Top three or top four, probably top three, maybe even top two. But um, yes, highly, highly advise to uh, level that, even if you're not going to spend gems on the uh, event itself. And other than that, we have ourselves the Soul Forge. Uh, oh, wait, actually, one other thing I wanted to go mention with that before I go into Soul Forge stuff. Uh, the team that you would use for that. Uh, of course, you'll be restricted to humans uh, for the Plague Lords uh, typing. And the easiest way to do this with Darkstone humans would be to go with Black Manigle into Triple Thrall. Thrall is one of those mana generators that is kind of overlooked quite a bit. He's a bit of a weird one, but uh, he's a common and relatively good. Uh, you do need to get him fully traded, but he's a common, so it's pretty easy to do. And he ends up destroying a bunch of dam, uh, a, a bunch of uh, random gems. He ends up doing two damage to himself and gains an automatic extra turn if there are 13 plus red. So basically, you just get it a pretty decent amount of destroy onto the board that you could potentially have an auto extra turn for. And with the fact that he has a bunch of link onto himself, he can end up accumulating a decent amount of mana. Not the greatest mana generator out there. But as far as options that you'll have as far as human darkstone that's pretty much one of the only few and then at uh, the later battles you would end up switching black manacle or whatever aoe uh, weapon that hits all enemies uh, that you have set here you can use dawnbring or something else as well but uh once you get to about the uh, fifth set of battles and further you'd most likely want to switch this out for a mang and then kill everything out with mang and just throw down mang titan into uh, triple crowd and that would allow you to a single surge his ability Get it up, get a bunch of destroy, that'll get mang up, and then you just be going down one by one from there. So, one last thing, and that is the Soul Forge this week. So, there are a few things that are worth crafting within Soul Forge. The most noteworthy is Wild Queen. This is the first time Wild Queen has been available in the Soul Forge since she has been buffed a few weeks ago. Similar to Elowen getting buffed pretty recently, as well as several other things from Pan's Veil, vale, uh, Wild Queen was one of them. She ended up getting a higher amount of greens and skulls created, which made her ability a lot more consistent than it was previously, and is actually a somewhat viable troop now. Not only that, but she is required to get plus one attack uh, for 10 stars off of Pan's Veil, vale, if you're that late in the game. So I would uh, do consider her as probably one of the better crafts now. Maybe top 10, the lower end of top 10 as far as crafts, maybe around 6 uh, or 7 or so. But uh, definitely worth something, to, uh, it's worth considering to craft. This is the first time she's been available since the buff, so uh, you might want to consider it if you have 4,000 diamonds uh, laying around. Still not the greatest of troops. Uh, it's pretty good with that new troop that they ended up adding that also has green to skull convert off of Empowered the other week or a few weeks ago. So, um, yeah, not the worst of options. Definitely uh, something to consider. As far as other things that you might want to craft, the only other two that are somewhat possibly worth it this week are Champion of Anu and Famine. Between the two, I'd probably say Champion of Anu is slightly better. Uh, mainly because it's associated with a kingdom upgrade. He'll end up giving you one armor if you can get uh, Swords Edge to 10 stars. Uh, he's not really used that much. If you're going to use him, the only thing you really use him on is Blue Guild War Day due to his plus one stats to all blue per turn. I guess you could technically use it in Blue Tower of Doom as well. Uh, however, uh, in both instances, it's probably not going to get you too far and is overall not the greatest of options. It does have a pretty good disable. But the biggest issue with this disable is there's plenty of troops that do it for cheaper. And he has a 24 mana cost, um, which doesn't really make it worth it. That was more like 20 or 22, it might be okay. But uh, it's just a little bit too much mana cost to really make him function, more often than not. But you would mainly do it for the kingdom upgrade. Famine is overall a better troop. However, it's not associated with any kind of kingdom upgrade. Uh, Famine has a four times mana drain, one of the only few of its kind within the game. And it also ends up getting a boost ratio for all the mana drained, which in PvP and uh, guild wars is often enough to almost get a kill uh, it is mainly used for guild wars in order to do secure wins either by using it on your defend team or using it offensively it's obviously really good against any team that does not have any immune to mana drain however it is pretty hard countered these days by the fact that things have mana drain immunity now so uh, you have to be careful with what you're using against if you are going to be using them not as good as it used to be by any means at one point it was probably the best troop in the game these days not so much however he is still okay uh, I wouldn't really bother going for him too much. As I mentioned, he's not for any kind of kingdom upgrade. 
any instances you would use them are so rare that it's probably not worth going out of your way for. But if you're starting to get to the point where you have a, a good number of mythics, you might be worth considering to boost up your Guild War uh, options whenever you're uh, facing those. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much everything since there's nothing to really show for PvP teams this week with the uh, new uh, Glory Troop that ended up coming out. So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And look forward to all of the early game new content for Nintendo Switch because we'll be starting a new account. We'll be streaming that pretty much every single day as soon as it launches for many, 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 many hours until we crash because <laughs> we're going to be grinding it just so hard when it initially launches. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll have a lot of fun with it over the next week and a few weeks and next month or so. Uh, definitely in the first week be playing it probably around 8 to 10 hours a day, maybe even more. Not sure if we'll be streaming all of that, but a good number of it will be streaming. And then after that, we'll still be streaming it quite a bit for the first month. After that, of the first month, not sure how much we'll still be doing it, but we'll still be playing it from here and there. And if nothing else, every single Sunday from now on, we will be playing the uh, Nintendo Switch account. Probably more towards a time that works for uh, Europe times, because a lot of people have been requesting that recently. Because most of my times that I stream don't really work that well for most of the Europe area, so... Sundays will be the new day for that from now on, where we'll basically do a combination of the Gems of War Nintendo Switch account combined with uh, other Nintendo Switch games of various kinds. But anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up for now. Hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will catch you all later. Goodbye, everyone.